In this video, we are going to learn the parts of an elevator, the types of elevators, the mechanical principles of elevators, uses of elevators, the rules of using them, and complications that can happen. Now let's look at the parts of an elevator. There are three parts of an elevator, the blade, the handle, and the part that connects these two that is the shank of the elevator. So, have you ever wondered why this handle is so bulky? The reason is that it allows us to hold the elevator comfortably so that we get more control over the instrument because applying controlled force is very important while using elevators. The handle can also be like this. This is a crossbar elevator. This handle is also called T-bar type handle. When the handle is like this, it can generate a lot of force. So, we must be extra cautious while using this type of elevator. This is the shank of the instrument. It transmits the forces that we apply to the blade, which is the working tip of the elevator. Whatever force it receives via the shank, it transmits that force onto the tooth or the bone where it is applied. The shape of the blade is different for different elevators. There are three basic types of elevators straight, triangular, and pick type. This is the straight elevator. You can see the shape of the blade is straight. This is the most commonly used type of elevator. Now if you look closely, you can see that the blade is not just straight. It Now let's see how to hold this elevator. It should be held like this with the index finger placed along the blade. This blade is not just one size. This elevator comes in different sizes depending on the width of the blade. So if the teeth are widely spaced or if we want to displace roots from their socket, we use elevators with larger size blade. The small size straight elevator like number 301 elevator is used when we are just starting to luxate a tooth before applying forceps. This one here is Couplin's elevator. It looks just like a straight elevator, but the working end right here is sharp and straight cut. For this reason, it's also called Couplin's chisel because it can be used for chiseling the bone to create a purchase point. It can also be used to split a tooth. It is also available in different sizes depending on the width of the blade. Other examples of straight elevators are the Miller elevator and the Potts elevator, but you can see that the blade is at an angle from the shank. It is created like this so that we can reach more posterior areas of the oral cavity. A Pexo elevator is also available as straight Apexo elevator. This one is used for luxation and elevation of fractured roots of maxillary anterior teeth. You can see the working tip is sharp and straight. It gets wedged between the root and the bone. So, this works on the wedge principle. We will talk about the principle in details later on. Since we are talking about apexo elevators, let's talk about the double-angled apexo or the curved apexo elevator. The blade has a convex and a concave surface ending in a sharp point. So the blade is just like the blade of the straight apexo, but it is double-angled and they are paired for mesial and distal roots. This double angle makes it easy to use it in the posterior regions of the oral cavity. They are used for fractured roots of maxillary and mandibular posterior teeth. After the straight elevator, the second most commonly used type of elevator is the triangular type. The Cryer elevator is a type of triangular elevator. It is named after an oral surgeon named Matthew Henry Cryer. You may not have heard his name, but he has made many contributions to the development of surgical dentistry. It is even stated that he was responsible for the greatly increased use of elevators. Okay, 
So you can see the shape of the blade is triangular and there are two of them because they are always in a pair, left and right. Now imagine that you have extracted a mandibular first molar, but the distal root got fractured and it's left in the socket. This is the kind of scenario when the crier elevator is useful. We need to place the tip of this elevator into the socket. The shank of the elevator is resting on the buccal plate of bone. The elevator is turned in a Do you remember where else you might have seen this triangular blade? The one that has a T-bar handle, right? It's the Winter Crier Elevator. Now many students get confused between the Winters and the Winter Crier Elevator. So just remember that when the shape of the blade is like that of the Crier Elevator, it's called Winter Crier Elevator, and when the shape of the blade is like this, it's Winter's Elevator. Here the shank is perpendicular to the handle. This type of design can generate a lot of force. It can even fracture the mandible. So we have to apply controlled force all the time. As we saw in the previous scenario where one of the roots is left in the socket, and if the level of the interradicular bone is higher than the root, we can use this crossbar elevator and fracture the interradicular bone because this elevator can generate that much amount of force. In this way, the tip of the elevator will now come in contact with the roots, and when we apply careful rotational force in an upward direction, the root piece will come out. Warwick James Elevator also looks like Cryer Elevator. There are two angled ones, mesial and distal and one straight. The blade is short and the end is rounded and as you can see the handle is flattened. If you hold it in your hands, you will find that this elevator is much lighter in weight than the other elevators. It's used for the extraction of retained roots, deciduous teeth, mandibular anteriors, and where there is less resistance area. For example, extraction of maxillary third molars. This elevator is named after William Warwick James. Although you may not be asked about this in exams, isn't it interesting to know about the real people behind the instruments that we use every day? There is an interesting story behind this. Even though these elevators were named after him, Warwick James actually disliked using elevators. This is because of the need for a fulcrum, which can compress the alveolar bone, and he believed this to be the source of osteitis and post-operative pain. Now, let's move on to the third type of elevator, the pick type of elevator. It's used for the removal of roots. This is the crane pick elevator. It's the heavy version of the pick type elevator. So, usually we have to drill a three millimeters hole in the root. This will be the purchase point. Then, the tip of the elevator is placed into this point. The buckle plate of bone acts like a fulcrum and the root is elevated from the socket. So, this elevator works on the lever principle. The second type of pick is the root tip pick elevators. They have two angles. So, they are double angled elevators. You can see how they have a delicate and sharp tip. Using this elevator, we can remove small root tips from the socket. But since the tip is very fine, we should not use this elevator using the wheel and axle or lever principle because it can break the tip. So it's only used to tease the very small root tips by inserting the tip into the periodontal ligament space between the root tip and the socket wall.